Hello ladies and gentlemen, Chris here with another project. Some time ago I built a low power laser attachment for my CNC router. I mainly use it for engraving work on wood. The laser is a Chinese 2 watt diet laser, which does not allow for fast engraving feeds. As usual for laser engraving I used a rastering process. But rastering tends to take really long for slow machines, especially if the size of the object is large. For example, a 500 by 500 mm engraving would take 4 to 6 hours. Therefore, I looked for better solutions. The obvious alternative was to generate toolpaths similar to the way it is done on milling machines. In this video, I'll show you both processes and compare them side by side. But first, we need to do some preparation. For this test, I used my logo. It represents a simple black and white graphics I usually need to engrave. I happen to have this design as a JPEG. For the process of rastering, we could use it as it is. But for generating a CNC mill-like toolpath, we need to convert the graphics to paths. In Inkscape, you can do this by using the trace bitmap function. After a little bit of fussing around with the settings, you should end up with a vector representation of your graphics. This also allows for scaling without a loss of quality. Since we don't need the JPEG anymore, I removed it from the Inkscape file. Now we can start with the process of converting the paths into G-code. In order to control the machine, I simply used G-code and made the machine interpret S100 to activate the laser with 100% of intensity. S1 is defined to deactivate the laser. I generate the G-code by using an Inkscape plugin called Raster to Laser G-Code Generator from 305 Engineering on GitHub. You can find a link in the description below. This tool is very straightforward to use and worked well for me. It offers several modes for rastering pictures and black and white designs. But as I mentioned, the resulting G-code takes a lot of machining time. Operating this program is very simple. You just need to enter parameters like the engraving speed, laser on and off command and the resolution you want to use and you're good to go. Unfortunately, it does only allow to set one of four predefined resolutions. Therefore, you may need to use a higher resolution than you actually would need otherwise. The script generates the G-code along with a preview PNG, which allows you to check the quality of the resulting engraving. Visualizing the resulting G-code would look like this. Blue lines represent laser on toolpaths and yellow ones indicate rapid travel paths. An obvious way to shorten the machining time was to optimize the rapid moves between the laser paths. I found some tools online which can engrave the outlines of paths, but none of them also did the areas on the inside. So I took the Python code from the G-Code Tools plugin and modified it to work with my laser. I also stripped out most of the now unused code and simplified the interface for the use of lasers. The script will create a toolpath for the infill and the parameter with minimal rapid traveling in between the laser paths. There are options to set the laser beam width, which would be the resolution and the engraving speed, as well as a few other parameters. It takes quite some time to calculate the toolpath compared with the raster option, but if you consider the improvement of the machining time, it's well worth it. If you now compare the two resulting paths, you can clearly see which one is more efficient. I created a little Python script to quantify the improvement. I calculated the actual length of the machining and rapid traveling paths from the G-code. For this relatively small design, it's about 200 by 40 mm by the way, I ended up with a total toolpath length of about 22 meters, of which 14.5 meters were rapid travel distances for the rastering process. Using the G-code from the path process, I managed to shorten the toolpath to approximately 7 meters, of which 1.4 meters were rapid travel distances. This means an improvement of overall travel distance of about 70%. To be fair, some of that is due to the lower resolution I used in the path process. 
raster to laser G-Cut did not allow me to set the same resolution. Therefore, I needed to go with the final one. In order to prove my point, I engraved both of the G-Cut samples shown before. I used the same speeds and feeds for rapid transfers and tool buffs in both G-Cut files. Rastering the design with these feeds took about 20 minutes. The G-Code program using paths instead of rastering finished in 11 minutes. This would still imply an improvement of 45% at this particular example. Of course, this is heavily dependent on the design and the size of the canvas. The bigger the object is, the more of an improvement you can expect. Now let's have a closer look at the results. I'd say the quality is more or less the same. There's maybe a little bit of an improvement on the edges because of the additional contour pass with the path method. Rastering leaves steps which are particularly obvious on lines with a flat angle relative to the direction of rastering. The new path process left a few small dots in areas where the path approximation algorithm decided to position lots of very small line pieces very close to each other. This is the case because at every G1 instruction the machine stops for a fraction of a second. If you know how to fix that, please help me out. Also let me know if you have any use for the plugin. If there is a demand, I'll make the source code available somewhere. But as of now, it's more of a concept than a finished piece of software. The code surely needs a little bit of refinement, but it works for my purpose. All in all, I'm really happy with the new process. It will save me a lot of machine time in the future and I'm looking forward to testing it on larger projects. Thanks for watching.